Welcome to Enter the Unknown, your one-stop shop for answers to questions that you were never bored enough to ask. My name is FJ, and after over a year of travelling through the world of Pokemon, we've finally made it to Alola with Ash's team. We're here to ask the question, can you beat Pokemon Ultra Sun using the exact team that Ash used for every major battle? Now, I'm sure several people have already commented this, but I know it's not technically possible because Meltan and Melmetal aren't available in the Alola games. Still, I didn't want to change the title this far into the series, so we're just going to try our best to be accurate. You know the story by now. We'll be running through the game using the Pokemon that Ash used, replicating their moves and levels as closely as possible. The battle style will be on set, and we can only use items if Ash happens to use them too, so basically just Z-Crystals. The change in formula from gym battles to totem Pokemon and Grand Trials makes this challenge a bit less straightforward than most, but let's give it a try. Ash Ketchum arrives in the Alola region with just his Pikachu on hand, so we're getting started in familiar territory. As always, crossing the border into a new region has reset Pikachu's level back to 5, but his moveset of Quick Attack, Thunderbolt, Iron Tail, and Electro Ball has carried over. Before getting into any important battles, Ash comes across a sleepy Rowlet who will become his second Alolan team member. We're starting with Rowlet at level 8, and even though you can see Razor Leaf there, we won't be able to use that for a while yet. It just made more sense to have it there now. With two Pokemon on hand though, it's time to go through our first trial, so let's visit the Verdant Cavern. Against the Totem Gumshoes, Ash makes use of Rowlet and Pikachu, so we'll have both of our Pokemon on hand here. We get started with Pikachu as the Totem Gumshoe's aura flares to life, raising his defense. That won't really make much of an impact against Pikachu, who starts with a Thunderbolt before Gumshoe slows him down with a scary face. A regular sized Young Goose joins the fray to take on Pikachu, but a single Thunderbolt instantly knocks her out. The distraction does mean the Totem Gumshoes can use another scary face, but not exactly sure how that helps. It does allow Gumshoes to move first, but a tackle activates Pikachu's static, so that speed advantage was pretty short-lived. After another Thunderbolt, an Electro Ball connects, which, like, had I forgotten about all of the speed drops? Well, my dumb choices do make for a more authentic Ash impression, so I guess it's okay. One final Thunderbolt hands us the win in the Verdant Cavern Trial, earning us Normalium Z, so let's move on to our first Grand Trial. Hala is the Kahuna on Meli Meli Island, and as we've still got just two Pokemon, they are our only options here. Rowlet's got a super effective move to use against Hala's fighting types thanks to Peck, but Pikachu's out of luck. To make up for that deficiency, Ash has given Pikachu the Normalium Z, so he can use the Z move Breakneck Blitz. The battle begins with Hala's Machop taking on Rowlet, so theoretically we should have the advantage. At level 16, three pecs can just about get the better of Machop before Revenge takes down Rowlet, so that's an okay start. With only 3 HP remaining, we switch out to Pikachu after Makuhita comes in, knowing a fake out would eliminate Rowlet. After Pikachu lands a Thunderbolt, Makuhita uses some Pocket Sand to blind the Electric Mouse. Knowing we need a move that will definitely connect, we go for Breakneck Blitz, which takes Makuhita down into red health. After another Sand attack, Hala uses a Super Potion, but through squinted eyes, Pikachu manages to hit with another Thunderbolt. As Makuhita is still recovering, another blindly fired Thunderbolt lands before yet another clump of sand is shot into Pikachu's eyes. That finally pays off as he fires wide with his attack, so Makuhita takes that opportunity to… use Sand Attack. Another Thunderbolt is avoided as the sadistic fighting type kicks more sand at Pikachu. After years of sandy combat, Pikachu finally gets the win with Thunderbolt, leaving Kahuna Hala with only one. Crabroll is up last, and with sand leaking from Pikachu's eyes, we take the opportunity to switch out to Rowlet. The Alolan Grass Starter is blasted by an all-out pummeling, which although not very effective, is easily enough for the knockout. After washing his face, Pikachu re-enters the battle and attacks with a Thunderbolt. That's countered by a power-up punch, but when that's not enough for a KO, our victory is confirmed. Thunderbolt connects once more, finishing off Crabrawler to hand us the win. That took a few tries, but once I realised Makuhita only cared about Sand Attack, the strategy was pretty easy to figure out. It's probably about time for us to add a third Pokemon now, so Ash decides to catch the Rockruff who's been hanging out at Professor Kakui's house. As it's already good friends with Pikachu, it's a natural fit for Ash's team. Rockruff knows Bite, Tackle, and Rock Throw, but Stone Edge is for later use only. You just need to know that it makes more sense for it to be there now. Three Pokemon isn't quite enough though, so another recurring Pokemon character will be joining Ash. Litten's been around since the first episode of the Sun and Moon series, but it takes until episode 21 for Ash to actually make the catch. Litten learns Fire Fang at level 14 here, so that's where he's starting with us. The moveset of Ember, Fury Swipes, Fire Fang, and Scratch is okay for now, but we'll be stuck with just that for quite a while. The next battle worth our time is a face-off with Gladion, but importantly, we never actually get to see the match end. 
Team Rocket interrupt the battle and it never finishes, so luckily we don't really need to win this one. Ash only uses Rockruff in this one, so we'll only have one Pokemon on hand against Gladion's three. After being hit by a faint attack, Rockruff cracks the opposing Zubat with a rock throw, but it's not super effective. We learn why immediately, as the illusion wears off and Zubat transforms back into Zorua. We repeat the moves from turn one, handing us the first win of the battle, but Rockruff is already weak. Thankfully the real Zubat's up next, meaning this time Rock Throw is actually super effective. A one-shot knockout takes us into a one-on-one -on -one against Gladion's Type Null, but oh no, it's Team Rocket! And the battle's over? Ah, oh, you'll never get to see us win the battle now. Damn. Damn, Team Rocket. Damn. The next challenge that Ash faces is a battle against the Totem Lorantis in the Lush Jungle Trial. For this one, Ash uses the duo of Litten and Rowlet, with the fire type being given the Normalium Z to enable use of Breakneck Blitz. The lack of gym battles reduced the similarities between the flow of the games and the anime, so it's been quite a while since our last on-screen battle. By the time we enter our battle against the Super Speed Lorantis, Litten is up to level 26. Also, yeah, I had all four Pokemon on hand here, but we just won't be using Pikachu and Rockruff. I really didn't want to reload and do the whole trial again. To start the battle, a not very effective X Scissors slashes Litten, who counters with a Fire Fang that burns Lorantis. The totem Pokemon calls on her ally Comfy, but we're staying completely focused on Lorantis. Thanks to the power herb she's holding, the totem Pokemon executes a Stolar Blade in one turn before Comfy's Flower Shield raises her defense. That does reduce the impact of Litten's Fire Fang, but we're still in good shape. The combination of Synthesis and Floral Healing completely restore Lorantis's HP, which is rather frustrating, but another Fire Fang chips away a decent chunk of health. Next up, we get to see a turn of X Scissor, Flower Shield, and Fire Fang, which gets us right back to where we were before all the healing. So, given that, we may as well run back the Synthesis, Floral Healing, and Fire Fang turn. After another X Scissor, Flower Shield combo, we switch to Ember, which should be more effective with Lorantis' defense stat being boosted. The Totem Pokemon charges up a Solar Blade, which thankfully starts before Comfy can set up a Sunny Day. That allows Litten to send one more Ember crashing into Lorantis, knocking her out to leave only her ally. After a couple of turns, Comfy actually succeeds in knocking out Litten, so that takes us into a one-on-one. -on -one. We send out Rowlet, who only needs one peck to finish the job and give us the win in the Lush Jungle Trial, earning us Gracium Z. Yeah, that was pretty horrible. We got quite lucky with move selections, and we really needed that first turn burn to reduce Lorantis' attack stat. Otherwise, this literally wouldn't have been possible. Alright, that win means it's time to take on the Akala Island Kahuna, Olivia. For the Akala Grand Trial, Ash chooses to use one Angry Rockruff and one Sleepy Rowlet. Rockruff is so disobedient that it actually ends up knocking out Rowlet during the battle. Let's see if we can unintentionally mimic that in Discipline. Before ever recording a battle attempt for this series, I'll have a couple of goes just to see where we're at basically. Test out what moves our opponent will use against which Pokemon and stuff like that. For this one, we were just nowhere close to winning even with Rockruff and Rowlet at level 35. Unfortunately, as I learned after saving my game, at level 36, if you haven't beaten Olivia, traded Pokemon stop listening to you. To get all the movesets right, I had to use traded Pokemon, so we're pretty screwed. From my various runs through this battle, I think even with an obedient Rockruff and Rowlet, we would have needed Pokemon well into the 40s in levels. Olivia is just too strong to defeat with these two. So, no, you can't beat Pokemon Ultra Sun using the exact team that Ash used for every major battle. I knew going into this that it wouldn't be possible, but I didn't think Olivia would be the one to stop us. Still, I'm going to continue on to see how much of the rest is possible, because there are plenty of other battles to try. For what it's worth, I did eventually beat Olivia with Rowlet, Rockruff, and Pikachu making it a 3-on-3, three -three, but it took like two days and I got sick of recording after like six hours. It basically just required a ton of luck along with the overleveling. Angry that it was part of our first ever losing team, Rockruff evolves into a Lycanroc, and here's where our team starts to go off script. Instead of Ash's Dusk form Lycanroc, we're stuck with a Midday form. Getting an own tempo Rockruff now isn't possible without trading with someone who happens to have received the Mystery Gift years ago. It doesn't make a massive difference for the time being as we've added Acceleroc after evolving. Stone Edge is still off limits though. Also, believe me, the irony isn't lost on me that while setting up for this challenge, I got an own tempo Rockruff in the surprise trade Nuzlocke I was doing on Twitch. If I could trade it back to Ultra Sun, I probably would have ruined the Nuzlocke and done it. Anyway, we're not done with evolutions just yet. Before our next major battle, Litten evolves into Tauracat to help improve our team further. Along with that evolution comes the new move Flame Charge, which replaces Ember. Alright, there's still one more team change coming before we can battle again. This here is the reason we had to do this challenge in Ultra Sun instead of Sun. 
Although the original Alola game fit better in some spots, Poipole is only obtainable in the later games. Ash has a tough time convincing the Ultra Beast to get into a ball, but with the help of Rowlet, a fifth Pokemon joins his team. Now, as has become commonplace at this point, our whole moveset isn't usable just yet. Toxic is the only move Poipole can use right now, but we need a Dragon Pulse on hand to make things easier later on. Alright, with all of that out of the way, we can finally move on to the next battle. Again, this doesn't really line up as we're jumping forward like 40 episodes, but as Ash only uses Pikachu, it's actually okay. In the anime version of this battle, Guzma only uses Glycopod, and the battle ends when the bug's emergency exit causes it to return to its ball. So, no conclusion here either. No such luck for us though. First impression is a physical stab move with 100% accuracy, 90 power, and plus 2 priority. There is no world in which we were even making it past a single turn against Guzma. I even gave Pikachu an Eviolite on a test run just to see if we were close to the level we needed to be at, and it was still a one-shot knockout. Seriously guys, Ultra Sun is really, really difficult. Our next battle is Acerola's Thrifty Mega Mart Trial, which sees Pikachu taking on Mimikyu. This is the battle where Pikachu first uses Electroweb, so we've got a very rare Pikachu moveset change to come here. As you can see, we've replaced Electro Ball with Electro Web, but they're both sort of pointless when we've got Thunderbolt, so it's not too important. Alright, let's give this a try. The Totem Mimikyu's aura flares to life, causing every single one of its stats to rise one stage, so we're way behind from the off. At level 37, a single play rough is enough for one shot, so let's try that again. Alright, by the time Pikachu reaches level 41, it can sometimes survive Mimikyu's play rough and even leave her paralyzed thanks to static. A Lumberry immediately cures that paralysis though, and Mimikyu's ability prevents Pikachu's Thunderbolt from dealing any damage. Bayonet then joins Mimikyu, and yeah, this isn't going to end well. Another blast of play rough finishes off Pikachu, so I think we're gonna have to call this one another fail. Even if everything went right and play rough missed, Gigavolt Havoc wasn't enough for a knockout. I think at like level 45, with a ridiculous amount of luck, this could have been possible, but it's not worth trying for any longer than I did. Like seriously, Ultra Sun is really hard. Alright, that takes us into the Ula Ula Grand Trial against Nanu, and with the run we're on, I'm not feeling overly confident. We only get to use Lycanroc against Nanu's trio, which seems unfair, but Ash pulled it off, so maybe we can do something? Using Lycanroc to take down Sableye wasn't much of a problem, but Crocroc's up second, and with Intimidate as his ability, we're pretty screwed. In the anime, Lycanroc uses Counter here for the first time, but the midday form can't learn it. Instead, we've only got not very effective moves. We can finally use Stone Edge though, so that's nice. Anyway, Crocroc's Earthquake renders our lack of Counter moot, because we could never live that up taking a hit against Sableye. So, yeah, another loss. I'm sort of just wondering if we can win any of the remaining battles at this point. Next up, we've actually got to jump back like 30 episodes, because we've got a face-off with Lusamine in the Shadow Realm. This battle actually occurs between Rockruff's evolution and Litten's, but all of Ash's Pokemon take part along with all of his friends. Lusamine has 5 Pokemon for this battle, so we're just going to use our whole team. That makes the most sense to me. It's actually a pretty embarrassing start, as even after an Iron Tail and a Gigavolt Havoc, Clefable gets the better of Pikachu. Lycanroc enters the battle and attacks with Stone Edge to tie up the match, so maybe it wasn't too bad a star. Lilligant replaces Clefable, so we make a switch of our own out to Poipole. Teeter Dance and Petal Dance both connect with the Ultra Beast before it succeeds with its only move, Toxic. We can't actually do anything else, so falling to Petal Dance doesn't make much of a difference to us. Tarakat's up next on our side, and after being hit by a Petal Dance, he levels up the battle with a Flame Charge. When Lusamine sends out Milotic, we stick with Tarakat, who lands a Fire Fang before she attacks with Icy Wind, for some reason. The Speed Drop lets her off as she finishes the job with Hydro Pump before Tarakat can attack again. Rowlet's up next, and once again Lusamine makes a questionable move selection. It allows Rowlet to attack with Razor Leaf, but that's not enough for the KO. Another weird choice in Hydro Pump casts aside Rowlet, leaving us with only one. Lycanroc comes back out and repeats his earlier appearance with a single Stone Edge knockout. We're still in a one on two though, and when Lusamine sends out her Beware, it's really game over. It doesn't take long for Beware to knock out Lycanroc and hand Lusamine the win. The important thing to note here is that you don't need to win this battle to advance, so technically we didn't fail there. I'm counting that as a win. The next opponent in our way is Necrozma, against whom Ash gets to use Sol Galeo, but there are a bunch of other Pokemon involved. Poipole's just there to watch on, but other than that we're going to make use of our whole team. Again, we've got a form issue as we're battling Ultra Necrozma rather than its base form, but that just adds to the challenge. With its base attack and special attack sitting at 167 and its base speed at 129, our only chance to move comes through priority attacks like Pikachu's Quick Attack and Lycanroc's Accelerock. 
Aside from those two hits, our whole team is wiped, leaving only Sol Galeo. We can't use Searing Sunray Smash because we like the Solganium Z, so we're just going to have to go for Black Hole Eclipse instead. Ultimately, a Dragon Pulse takes Sol Galeo down to 16 HP, but an incredibly timely critical hit on Crunch actually gives us another win. So yeah, I'll take it. We're really back on form now. What's next? Oh, right. We've got to say goodbye to Poipole for the time being, which is just no fun for anyone. Ash is crying, Poipole's crying, Pikachu's crying, Nanu's probably crying. It's a bad time. Maybe whatever's up next will cheer us up. Oh, it's Hapu. Right. The Pony Island Kahuna is a ground type specialist against whom Ash only uses Pikachu. So, a one on four with the biggest type disadvantage possible. I'm feeling confident, let's get to sweeping. The battle gets underway with Hapu's Golurk facing off against Pikachu, so we can't even use Quick Attack. Nice. We attack with the only move that will have any effect, and unfortunately it's not one of those super rare 8 times critical hits, so it's not enough. One Golurk Earthquake though? Yep, yeah, yeah, that'll do. If it makes any difference, even with our full team of 4, Hapu was too much for us, so I can't really blame this one on Ash. I still do though. Maybe a new Pokemon will help improve the team. Our next addition is the mythical Pokemon Meltan, who you can't actually obtain in any of the Alola games. Ash catches it though, so let's see what we can do. Oh my god, there it is! It's a Meltan! That is definitely, unquestionably a Meltan, and I won't hear another word about it. Alright, seriously, my logic here with the Beldum and Metagross are partial Steel-type Pokemon whose base stat totals are identical to Meltan and Melmetals respectively. There is only one shared move between the duos though, so we'll only be able to use Flash Cannon with our Mel Metagross. The reason I'm taking you all the way forward with this is because we're time jumping yet again. We need to take care of Meltan's evolution now, because the next battle facing us is our final face-off with Gladion. In the anime, this is the Manalo Conference final, but we've got to do it before we can reach the Pokemon League. Ash selects the trio of Mel Metal, Pikachu and Lycanroc though, so that's why we need to skip forward to the evolution. We get things going with Gladion's Crobat facing off against our Mel Metagross. It's a terrible type matchup for Gladion, and after a couple of blasts of Flash Cannon, he recalls Crobat and sends out Lucario. The Flash Cannon that connects with Lucario does way more damage than expected though, which only makes sense as Zoroark's illusion wears off. A super effective Z-move in Black Hole Eclipse is easily enough to finish off our Mel Metagross, so just like that, Gladion takes the lead. Pikachu comes out next, but Zoroark's that horrible combination of fast and powerful, so a single Night Days leaves us in a 1 on 4. Lycanroc's out last, and starts with an Accelerock to guarantee the first hit. It falls just short of knocking out Zoroark though, so he's able to strike with Night Days once more. Unlike Pikachu, Lycanroc can live a hit from Zoroark, and thanks to his priority move, is able to cut Gladion's advantage by 1. Lucario's up next, and with just Lycanroc left, we've got no chance. After a rock throw, Lucario's Aura Sphere easily defeats us, and that's that. I ran this one back with Tauracat added to make it a fair 4-on-4, four four, but even then Gladion was pretty much unbeatable. Have we really not won a trainer battle since Hala? That's a little bit embarrassing. In Pokemon Ultra Sun, the Elite Four of Kahili, Acerola, Olivia, and Mulane actually all make appearances in the anime. That's rare if not completely unique, but other than Olivia, nobody has actually battled Ash. At least not in a classic sense. Kahili and Acerola both took part in the Battle Royal that opened the Manalo Conference, but neither came face to face with the Pokemon protagonist. So, seeing as all of the Elite Four use 5 Pokemon and that's the number we currently possess, we're just going to use our full team. We're going to go from right to left too, because it just works out better for our team. Our battle with Kahili gets started with her Braviary facing off against Lycanroc. Stone Edge sails out of the earth into the air and cuts down the bird before he can even react. When Holooch enters the battle, we make a switch out to Rowlet, who's crushed by a flying press, but just about lives the hit. The grass starter is too slow to outspeed Kahili's Holoocha though, so a second flying press puts an end to him, tying up the match. We call on Pikachu third, and after a Throat Chop and Thunderbolt leave both Pokemon weak, Kahili breaks out a Full Restore. Another Thunderbolt chips away Holooch's HP once again, but this time it also paralyzes him. That just convinces Kahili to use another Full Restore, and after a third Thunderbolt, she presses on and calls her Poison Jab. It's enough for the knockout, but when Static kicks in, Holooch is paralyzed for a second time. Tarakat enters the battle to finish off the Luchador with a Flame Charge, finally getting us past Kahili's second Pokemon. Mandibuzz is out third for the Elite Four member, and thanks to Tarakat, Flatter, and Fire Blast, it's not a long battle. After Mandibuzz faints, Kahili calls on two cannon, who's absolutely torched by a powered up Tarakat Fire Blast. Oricorio comes out last, and we switch back to Lycanroc, who breaks out his splintered Storm Shards to finish off the Firebird and the battle. 
After beating another trainer for the first time in what feels like years, we can move on to the second Elite Four member, Acerola. Second if we're going right to left at least. The ghost type member of the Elite Four leads off with her bayonet, and although he lands a shadow claw, a couple of Lycanroc bites take him out. When Delmize enters, we switch out to Rowlet knowing an energy ball is incoming. Again, it only takes a couple of attacks to knock out Acerola's Pokemon with Brave Bird doing the deed. It only takes a matter of seconds for Frostlass to earn Acerola her first win of the match with Ice Shard, so we call on Mel Metagross third. After a couple of turns, both Pokemon are left in red health, and from there, Frostlass's Shadow Ball ties up the match. Tarkat is also hit by a Shadow Ball before earning a knockout with Flame Charge, leaving Acerola with only two. Acerola's ace, Palisand, is hit by an Inferno Overdrive, which instantly earns Tarkat another knockout. Drift Blim is up last for Acerola, and although Fire Blast connects, Ominous Wind finally gets the better of Tarakat to take us into a 2 on 1. Pikachu is the last member of our team to join the battle, and thanks to Drift Blim's partial flying typing, it doesn't take long for him to earn us another Elite Four win. I guess it's now time to relive the nightmare that began it all. Olivia was the trainer that originally ended this run, and now she's back with extra Pokemon and a lot more levels on her side. This time around, we've actually got a team of Pokemon who won't disobey our every order though, so that gives me some hope. Armaldo and Cradley both fall to Lycanroc without getting hit in, so that feels good after all the hell they put me through. Unfortunately, one of Olivia's new additions is Probopass, a Pokemon who's basically custom designed to mess up our team. Even an incredible run from Lycanroc means nothing after an Olivia full restore and eventually our star Pokemon falls. Pikachu doesn't really fare any better going down to an Earth Power after landing a single Thunderbolt. Probopass also manages to paralyze Tarakat with a Thunder Wave before Firefang leaves her with only a single hit point. Sadly, that's enough to execute a Power Gem, which knocks off Tarakat to take Probopass's win tally to 3. Melmetagross is the one to finally end our messy run, taking out Probopass to leave us in a 2 on 2. When Olivia calls on her Lycanroc, we switch out to Rowlet, basically hoping to waste the Angry Wolf Z move. In fairness, the Grass Starter does do just that, getting obliterated by a Continental Crush on his way out. A double feature of Flash Cannon finishes off Olivia's Lycanroc, leaving only her Gigalith. To get things started, both Flash Cannon and Bulldoze wipe out just under half of the opponent's remaining HP. While our second hit fails to earn the knockout though, Gigalith's Bulldoze goes from 48 hit points of damage to at least 54, so against Olivia, we come up short once again. This was as close as I ever got, by a long way. A lot of the time, we never made it past Probopass. The luck we got with Lycanroc against a partial seal type was almost enough to earn us the win, but not quite. Again, just to reiterate, Ultra Sun is really difficult. Our final Elite Four face-off begins with an incredibly lengthy battle between Mel Metagross and Klefki that eventually ends with a struggled win for us. Mulane sends out his Alolan Dug Trio next, and from here, everything just gets embarrassing. Every Pokemon we send out just gets absolutely annihilated by the long-haired lover from Lush Jungul. Hansen mbops our entire team with a series of earthquakes until we are no more. Yep, a single alone dug trio is just too much for the team that Ash Ketchum built. Let's just move on and forget about all of this. Alright, before being crowned champion in game, we have to take down Hao. I'm not even going to humour you by trying to take on his team of six with just a Rowlet. In fact, I'm not even going to bother wasting your time with this one. In a lot of attempts, I only got Howe down to his final Pokemon once, and even then, Noivern one-shotted us. Of the attempts I recorded, this was the only one where I even got Howe down to two. In the context of the video, though, this really wasn't important. The one that matters is our upcoming face-off with Kukui. Before getting into that battle, Naganadal returns, having evolved from Poipole during its time on another world. So, against Professor Kakui, we'll have use of all six Pokemon, and just so we get to see it fully evolved at least once, I evolved Tarakat before the battle. In the anime, it evolves mid-battle, but it seems like a waste to not see it in action at least once. Only Incineroar and Braviary actually carry over from Kakui's anime team, but it should still be a good battle. Our final Alolan face-off gets underway, with Kakui's Lycanroc up against our newly evolved Naganoddle. Sharp stones scatter across our side of the field as the mythical Pokemon fires off a Dragon Pulse. Kakui wisely switches out to his Alolan Ninetales, who isn't affected by Dragon Pulse, but we can do that too. We recall Naganoddle and send out Mel Metagross, who dodges a Ninetales Blizzard. She connects at the second time of asking, but it's not very effective as opposed to our quad effective Flash Cannon. Ninetales goes down in one to earn us the first win of the match, but Kakui calls on his Incineroar next, so not a great matchup. We switch back out to Naganoddle, who resists Incineroar's Inferno Overdrive, surviving the hit and countering with a Dragon Pulse. 
That doesn't really do much, so Incineroar's Outrage levels up the match, but at least we got Kakui Z move out of the way. Our Lycanroc enters the battle next, thankfully connecting with a Stone Edge to hand us back the advantage. When Snorlax comes out, we break out a Z move of our own, striking with splintered Storm Shards before the normal type counters with high horsepower. With Snorlax into red health, we can just go for Accelerock to guarantee the first attack and stretch our advantage to two. Magnazone's up next, and as we've got no great options, we can only score with a single bite before Flash Cannon knocks out another of our Pokemon. Our Incineroar enters the fray next, and although he's badly damaged by Stealth Rock, he's able to send a Fire Blast crashing into Magnazone. It's not enough for the knockout, so Thunder Wave paralyzes Incineroar before Kakui withdraws Magnazone to send his Lycanroc back out. Fire Blast was aimed at Magnazone, but it instead hits Lycanroc, who just about survives with a sliver of HP before a lucky burn finishes the job. The Alolan Pokemon Professor calls on his Braviary next, and after taking a Fire Blast from Incineroar, it uses a Whirlwind to switch us out to Rowlet. The Grass Starter isn't long for this world though, as a Braviary Brave Bird cuts him down. Honestly, getting the opponent to take some recoil damage is about the best Rowlet can do, so I'll take it. We send Pikachu out next, who finishes off Braviary with a Thunderbolt, forcing Kakui to bring Magnazone back into battle. Once again, a single Thunderbolt is enough for the knockout, so we're finishing strong with Pikachu scoring back-to-back -back KOs. That is a seriously satisfying end to a challenge that was truly horrendous. I knew going into this that we were never making it past Hapu, but I didn't think it would all go so poorly. Theoretically, this would be the end of this series, but I've got an idea for Pokemon Sword that I might just have a go at. If you made it this far though, seriously, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.